holds a lot of groceries, but I think we've gotten everything we need. Now, where is that digger? Digger, digger, where are you? I'm back. Here I am, Beth. Uh, where have you been for so long? Well, digger, can you guess? Let me see. Hmm, big brown bag, uh, filled with food and whatnot. Um, I'd have to say you've been shopping. That's right, digger. I've been with Mom at the grocery store to buy these supplies for our... Ooh, eggs. I bet those are for the Easter egg hunt we're having this Sunday. You're close, Digger. These are eggs for a celebration, but they're not for Easter. They're for another holiday we're celebrating tonight. Another holiday? Oh, that's great. Why didn't anyone tell me there was another holiday today? Perhaps someone has, Digger. Have you heard anyone at school or at church say that today is Maundy Thursday? Monday, Thursday? No, I think I'd remember someone saying that. Monday, Thursday. That sounds really silly. Does that mean we pretend it's Monday, even though it's Thursday? Digger, I didn't say Monday, Thursday. I said Maundy Thursday. Or some people call it Holy Thursday. It's the night that we remember when Jesus ate with his disciples for the last time before he was arrested and taken to be crucified. Oh my, well, that doesn't sound silly at all. And it sure doesn't sound like a reason to celebrate. Oh, but it is, Digger, because we know that Jesus died and rose again to take away our sins. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. That celebration is for Easter. So what are we doing tonight, Beth? Well, tonight we're going to have a very special meal. The same meal that Jesus and his disciples were having on that night so many years ago. Golly, the same meal? But how do we know what Jesus and his friends were eating that night? Oh, that's a good question, Digger. On that night, the Bible tells us Jesus and his friends were having a celebration too. They were celebrating the Feast of Passover. It's a very special feast with some very special and very specific foods to eat. Passover. Passover. What a strange name for a feast. Passover. Oh, I get it. Like, pass over the potatoes. I'm hungry. <laughs> Not quite, Digger. <laughs> I think I've heard of Passover, Beth. When I asked some of my friends at school what they were going to do for Easter, they told me that they were going to celebrate Passover instead. Your friends are probably Jewish. Passover is a tradition that the Jewish people have been celebrating for 4,000 years. But it's also a very important celebration for Christians like you and me. And when we celebrate Passover, it can make our Easter celebration even more special. How can I celebrate Passover, Beth? First, you'd probably like to know just what the Passover celebration is all about. It all began in the country of Egypt. Down in Egypt many years ago, the Israelites toiled and slaved till God sent Moses so they all would know that soon they would be saved. The king of Egypt was a stubborn man. He would not let them go. But God sent Moses with a better plan to deal with old Pharaoh. The Lord sent Moses to demand that Pharaoh set the captives free and let them leave for their own land away from Egypt's slavery. But, as I said, old Pharaoh was a very stubborn king indeed. He laughed when Moses asked that he should have his workers freed. But God would not give up so quickly. Pharaoh was about to learn. Moses told him, God gave you a chance, but now it's the Lord's turn. God sent nine plagues to Egypt. First God turned the Nile to blood. God sent down flies, and frogs, and gnats, and locusts to eat all their food. Then God sent hail, and sickness, and God made the cattle ill. God turned the sky to black, but Pharaoh would not change his will. Then Moses spoke to Pharaoh again, God's giving one more chance. Can all God's people now go free? Said Pharaoh, no. They can't. With that, Moses turned around and walked out toward the street. I think you'll sing a different song the next time that we meet. God said to Moses, Pharaoh has refused for the last time. I'm sending one last plague that's sure to turn his stubborn mind.
tell every tribe of Israel to hurry and prepare for one last meal in Egypt. Then I'll lead them far from there. Oh no, Beth. What are the Israelites going to do? Didn't you hear the story, Digger? They're going to do the same thing we're doing tonight. They're going to prepare a meal. But how is eating going to help them escape from that mean old pharaoh? It's all a part of God's plan, Digger. You'll just have to trust God, just like Moses and the Israelites did. And in the end, you'll see that God had the perfect recipe for an escape plan. Oh, I don't think I can wait to find out. Just remember, Digger, the Feast of Passover is a celebration. We already know that God freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. We're having this special meal called the Seder meal to remember and celebrate that wonderful night. Oh, well, why didn't you say so, Beth? I was so worried. That's okay, Digger. Here, you can calm down by helping me get ready for the Seder meal. I have all the things we need right here. Are they special things, Beth? They certainly are, Digger. The Seder meal is a family meal, just like many others that we share at home. But there are some very specific and some very strange foods that are eaten at the Seder meal, which make it a little bit different. It sounds like someone is being picky. <laughs> Not picky, Digger, just special. Because these foods all help to tell the story of the first Passover. We're going to eat talking food? Storytelling food, Digger. But don't worry, your food won't talk back to you. <laughs> well, so what do we have? Well, some of the important things we need for the Seder meal are wine, a bowl of water, parsley, a bowl of salt water, a hard-boiled egg, and some bitter herbs. I'm using horseradish for my bitter herbs. Um, Beth? Yes, Digger? I think I'll skip the Seder meal if that's okay. Oh, I know it doesn't look like a very tasty meal, but trust me, you'll like it. Well, okay. Oh, I almost forgot two most important things. Here, we have some unleavened bread. That's bread? It looks like a big cracker. I'll explain that later, Digger. And here's our most important part, lamb stew. Wow, now that smells good. I think I might like this Seder meal after all, Beth. I thought you might, Digger. But why is the lamb stew so important? Like I said, Digger, our meal tells the story of the Israelites' escape. And a meal of lamb and flat bread was the secret to God's escape plan. God had the perfect recipe for making the escape. He told his servant Moses, here's precisely what to make. Tell every Israelite family that God has sent the word. Each household needs to pick a lamb, <laughs> the finest in the herd. This lamb will be your dinner. Every house will have just one. Don't make too much, for you must eat it all before you're done. If you obey the Lord's command and share this special meal, then you will all be freed, and Pharaoh will know God is real. And when that happens, you must all be set to leave at once. Here's how you all can be prepared to go when the time comes. The bread that you will eat tonight should not be made with yeast. You won't have time to let it rise before this hurried feast and dress in only travel clothes, with sandals on and tied. Pack up the things you want to take. You all will leave tonight. And here's the most important part, the part you must not miss. Save all the blood from these young lambs. It must be used like this. You all should spread the blood upon the mantles of your door. This blood will be a sign to show which houses serve the Lord. For late tonight, the Lord will send the last and greatest plague, and only houses marked with blood on doorposts will be saved. A messenger from God will come to each Egyptian home to bring a sad and dreadful message like you've never known. But if your home is marked as God has told you all to do, the messenger will pass you by, and you'll be safe. It's true. Now do you see why the lamb is so important, Digger? Boy, oh boy, do I. The blood from the lamb is God's special mark. That's right. 
the blood from the lamb marked the houses where God's people, the Israelites, were waiting for their escape. The people in the houses marked with God's special signal were passed over when God sent his final plague to Egypt. That's where the name Passover comes from. Oh, I've been meaning to ask you that, Beth. Well, Digger, if you're ready, the table is set, and we're about to start the Seder meal. Are you kidding? Sure I'm ready. Just lead the way. Here we are, Digger, and here's a seat just for you. Somebody put a pillow in my chair. We relax on a pillow to eat, because back in Egypt, the Israelites had to eat their meal standing and ready to go. Ooh, soft. Wow, it's beautiful. And boy, am I hungry. Wait, Digger! Ah! Oh, sorry, Digger. But there is a very specific order of doing things in the Seder meal. Everything that we eat and everything that we do has a very special meaning. You'll have to wait until I tell you that you can eat and what you can eat and in what order you can eat it. Oh, I knew there was a catch. Come on, Digger. It's a celebration. This will be fun. <laughs> oh, all right. That's the spirit, Digger. We start the meal by lighting these candles and saying a prayer. Baruch, Ata, Adonai, Eloheinu. Beth, I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying a prayer in the Hebrew language, Digger, the language of the Israelites. It means, blessed are you, O Lord our God. Oh, I like that. Baruch, Ata, Adonai, Baruch, Ata, Adonai, Eloheinu. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for you have kept us alive and sustained us and brought us into this season. May this place be made holy by the light of your presence. Amen. Now we wash our hands. Okay, but you should have told me that before I came to the table. Digger, we'll do it right here. Oh. That's what these little cups of water are for. Dip your fingers in and wipe them on your napkin. Hey, that saves a lot of time. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for you have blessed us with your commandments that we might serve you with holy hands. There's a lot of praying, isn't there, Beth? There sure is, Digger. Now dip your parsley in the salt water right there. You mean like this? That's right. The green parsley is a symbol for springtime, a joyful time of rebirth, just like the Israelites felt when they left Egypt. But along with that joy came the many years of salty tears. That's what the salty water stands for. Wow, this food really does tell a story. It sure does, Digger. Do you remember this food? That's the bread. The bread that God told Moses and the Israelites to make. But I can't remember why it's flat. This bread is made without leaven or without yeast because God knew that when Pharaoh made up his mind to let the people go, there wouldn't be time to let the bread rise before baking it. And that's just what happened. After the 10th plague, Pharaoh told Moses and the Israelites to go, and they left right away. Pharaoh set the people free. Moses led them to the sea. Pharaoh told his army men, bring those people back again. Moses saw the army come. Moses said, it's time to run. But the people said, Oh no, there is nowhere else to go. Moses said, Just follow me. God will lead us across the sea. Moses bowed his head to pray. He knew God would show the way. God told Moses what to do. Moses split the sea in two. Moses and the mighty crowd crossed the sea on solid ground. Pharaoh chased with all his might. Water washed him out of sight. All the people got away. They gave thanks to God that day. Well, we've met most of the food on our plate, and now it's time for you to do something special, Digger. Really, Beth? Oh, what is it? What do I get to do? You get to ask questions, Digger. Oh, but I've been doing that all night. You certainly have, and now you have a chance to ask many of those same questions again. But the fun part is, we already know the answers to most of those questions. Here, I've written them down for you. Why is this night different from all other nights? Why do we only eat unleavened bread? Why do we eat only bitter herbs? Why do we dip our parsley? Why do we eat while reclining on pillows? Hey, I, I, I do know the answer to those questions. It's all in the story of the Israelites' escape from Egypt. 
That's exactly right, Digger. And at this point in the meal, the story of their escape is read from the Bible. Oh, is that what we're going to do now? We've already listened to most of the story, so now we're going to sing a song about it. <laughs> sing a song at dinner? I told you this was a celebration, Digger. And there's always singing at a celebration, right, Beck? Well, I certainly think so, Digger. This song is called the Dayenu. The Day what? The Dayenu. That's a word that means it would have been enough. We're singing a thank you song to God that says it would have been enough for you to just have set the Israelites free, but you did all kinds of other wonderful things too. Dayenu. Dayenu. Hey, that sounds kind of fun. I think you'll find this song sounds like a lot of fun. What if God who set us free from Egyptian tyranny? What if God who set us free had not opened up the sea? Open sea, set us free. Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu. What if God who set us free and who opened up the sea had not led us hand in hand across the sea on solid land? Solid land, hand in hand, open sea, set us free. Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu. What if when we hand in hand crossed the sea on solid land, God had not showed us the way through the desert every day? Show the way every day, solid land, hand in hand, open sea, set us free. Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu. What if when God showed the way in the desert every day, had not spoken from on high on the mountain Sinai? From on high Sinai, show the way every day. Solid land, hand in hand, open sea, set us free. Da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da da ye nu, da ye nu. What if God who spoke on high from the mountain Sinai Had not at our journey's end brought us to the promised land Journey's end, promised land, from on high Sinai Show the way every day, solid land, hand in hand, open sea, set us free da da ye nu da da ye nu da da ye nu da ye nu da da ye nu da da ye nu da da ye nu da ye nu <laughs> that was fun, Beth. But there are some things here that you haven't mentioned yet, like these eggs and that yummy-smelling lamb stew. Right, Digger. And now is a good time to talk about them. The eggs we eat at the Passover meal are very much like the eggs we color and hide at Easter. I knew it! Both Easter eggs and the eggs eaten at Passover are reminders of a new life. At Passover, we think of the new life that the Israelites had away from slavery in Egypt, and at Easter, we think of the new life we have because Jesus rose from the dead to free us from our sin. Jesus freed us from slavery, too. You've got it, Digger. Look here. This is the bone from the lamb I used in the stew. Do you remember what is special about the lamb? It was the lamb's blood that, uh... Mark the houses of God's people, the Israelites. That's great, Digger. I'm very proud of you. The lamb's blood was used to save the lives of the Israelites. Pray with me. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe, for you made us holy with your commandments and protected us by the blood of the lamb. You were right, Beth. This meal really does tell a great story. A story of danger and, and of narrow escape and danger and, and intrigue and danger and, and victory. I'm glad you like it, Digger. But there's something even better about Passover that I haven't told you yet. <laughs> even better? You mean dessert? <laughs> Not dessert, Digger, but good news for you and for me and for all of God's people. Oh, tell me, tell me, tell me. The good news is that God has rescued us as well, just like the Israelites. Rescued? Rescued from what? The Pharaoh? We've been rescued from sin and freed from death and we'll all be led to the promised land in heaven to be with God forever. We have? 
But how? When? By, by who? By Jesus, the Lamb of God, who gave us his life just like the Passover lamb to protect us and free us and save us and to give us everlasting life. Now, that is a reason to celebrate. This is the Feast of Passover, said Jesus with delight. Let's find a place where we can go and celebrate tonight. They found a room up many stairs, the perfect place to meet. They gathered round a table there, filled up with things to eat. The twelve disciples looked around. They saw some bread and wine. The twelve of them were hungry. They could hardly wait to dine. Then they sat down together to enjoy the food galore. They ate a meal of lamb and bread, just like in years before. They all thanked God for freeing all the people long ago. Then Jesus stopped and told them all some things you'd like to know. I am the Lamb of God, he said. I've come to pay the price for all the sin in all the world. I am God's sacrifice. The twelve disciples were confused, although they shouldn't be, for Jesus' meaning was as clear as it could ever be. The lamb we share at Passover reminds us of the way that God saved all his people with the blood of lambs one day. And so, when Jesus called himself God's lamb, it's clear to see that he would give his life so all God's people would be free. Free from slavery of sin, and free to start again, and free to live forever in the promised land with him. And when the feast was over, Jesus took the wine and bread. This is my body and my blood. Please take them, Jesus said. I give you all this special gift to take away your sins. Remember that I love you all, and I will come again. Now every time you see this meal, you'll know that it is true, that Jesus loves you very much. He died and rose for you. This was a super meal, Beth. I want to celebrate Passover every year. Well, you can, Digger. There's nothing wrong with celebrating Passover. It's a great way to remember one of the most wonderful miracles of the Bible. How God freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. And it reminds us how Jesus freed us from sin. Hey, that reminds me. I still have some hard-boiled eggs left over. Is it too early to start celebrating Easter? Oh, boy! Happy Passover, Digger. Happy Passover. Thank you.